One of the questions I get asked a lot on Google Hangouts is how to work with virtual instruments that are in stereo in a more mono-friendly manner, either by taking a stereo sound and making it monophonic to fit better in a mix or to create both mono and stereo files at the same time when using a render in place for drum tracks. Let's take a look at how we can accomplish both of these tasks. Let's listen to an, a stereo sound in Retrolog 2 here, which will have stereo effects as well as stereo sound. <laughs> Now, let's say we want to make that more monophonic to sit better in a mix. We could accomplish this through using an insert plugin. And the plugin that we could use that comes with Cubase is under spatial and panner called mono to stereo. I'm gonna adjust the width all the way down and click on the mono button. And now as we play our, our retro log patch, it's gonna be in mono. <laughs> You hear the delays just cascade straight in the middle. We'll bypass it again for stereo. And again, back to mono. Many people want the ability to render mono and stereo tracks for drum parts simultaneously. So let's say we have a part with both kick, snare, hi-hat, that also involves room mics, overhead mics, which are in stereo. So I want to have my kick, snare, hi-hat, and mono, my room and overheads, in stereo. So I want to go to the instrument here and activate outputs for each of the sources. So kick, snare, hi-hat, room, overhead. I want to go within the mixer of Groove Agent and we'll route accordingly. So kick, snare, hi-hat, room, and overhead. The signal path and how what determines if a file is mono or stereo, it depends upon the mix console settings and the signal path. So I'm going to go to my VST connections and I, in the outputs tab, I'm going to add three mono outputs and let's add two stereo outputs. These outputs don't have to be assigned or connected or actually exist in hardware. We're just kind of creating a software path. So we've created three mono outputs, th two stereo outputs. We've routed our drum sounds to go out to our independent outputs that we've assigned. And now what we want to do is to take those outputs and determine if they're gonna be mono or stereo. And we're gonna do this in the full mix console. Now it's important to have independent mono and stereo. So I'm gonna select my first three tracks here. So this is my kick snare hi-hat that we've assigned and I'm going to hold down the shift key and assign the first mono output so we can see mono out one two three I'm going to select the room and overhead these are two stereo and again I can hold down the shift key and holding down the shift key incrementally does routing so now I've assigned my kick snare hi-hat to mono outputs the room and overhead to stereo outputs We'll select the MIDI event on a project window, right click, and we can go to render in place. And I'm gonna to go to the render settings. And you're gonna to want to have it for complete signal path. And 
or complete signal path plus master effects. But if you do it for dry or channel settings, the routing won't carry over. So choose complete signal path. And now when we render the files in one mouse click, we can have our mono kick snare hi-hat and our stereo overheads and room mics. So when we play it back, we can see that the original MIDI part event is muted as was set in the render settings. So you can see that you could render both mono and stereo simultaneously using this method. Or if you wanted to take a wide stereo sound and collapse it to mono to make it fit better in a mix, you could use the mono to stereo VST plugin. So as you can see, this gives you a lot of flexibility and can really increase your workflow within Cubase. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.